And of course, the COVID-19 pandemic still raging here in the U.S. that we are seeing uh, cases coming down, hospitalizations as well. But this pandemic has certainly opened up um, many Americans' eyes to the inequalities that we've seen within the healthcare system. Joining us now uh, to talk more about how corporate America is thinking about the next phase of um, treatment here in the U.S. is Carlos Cubia. He is uh, Walgreens. Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer. We're also joined by Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kemlani. Um, Carlos, thanks so much for, for joining the program today. I'd love to, to begin with um, just kind of getting your thoughts on, on how you at Walgreens are thinking about, um, again, the challenges that really face the, the equity of American healthcare, and, and I think the ways that we've all been confronted with um, this lack of access to vaccines, whether it's in that stage, testing at the beginning, and, and I think ongoing COVID treatment as, as this situation unfolds. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Glad to be with you here today. When we think about um, the vaccine in and of itself, we know that uh, there's been health disparities in black and brown communities. And at Walgreen Boots Alliance, we are committed to making sure that we are reaching the underserved and underrepresented communities through education, uh, through uh, targeting underserved areas with our vaccines. I mean, we've been in the vaccine game for a very long time. Uh, we know how to get to those underserved and hard to reach communities. And it's a commitment that we've made many years ago. And I think we're well positioned today to continue to educate and to provide the information necessary so that folks can have access to the vaccine. So Carlos, vaccines are, are now starting to hit some of your stores across 15 states. What protocols have you put in place to ensure that the right people are getting this vaccine? Well, as you know, that the first set of vaccines that were released were dictated by the CDC, states and local governments. So we've been working in partnership with those um, organizations to make sure that we are adhering to the guidelines that they set. But as we move to mass distribution, we wanna make sure that we are equipped to do a couple of things, make sure that the vaccine is available everywhere in all of the communities that need it. Uh, and I know in some areas that are hard to reach, we have uh, undertaken uh, strategies to go out to mobile clinics, uh, to work with off-site clinics to make sure that we're getting in those underserved areas uh, to follow the protocol that the CDC has set and to really go out and to um, make the vaccine av available for everyone. So really following the guidelines and protocol that the CDC and state and local governments have set. Carlos Anjali here. There seems to be a twofold technology issue at stake. One is appointments and, and making them. And then secondly is gathering and capturing that data uh, to ensure that we're keeping track of um, minorities and, ethnic, and different ethnic groups that are getting access to the vaccine. What is Walgreens doing to help address both? Well, again, as I stated earlier, we have been doing vaccines and, and recording that information and capturing that data so that we can share it with the necessary organizations and authorities that um, that are uh, as appropriate. So we're going to continue to follow those guidelines through technology that we've set up through our um, registration process. Um, and so this is not new for us in terms of this information. I mean, this is something that we've been doing for quite some time. So really, we'll continue to follow the protocols that's already been in place. Uh, and if there are new procedures that are required by the federal government or the CDC, then we'll quickly work with our teams to, um, to, to put those in place and follow those guidelines. Carlos, it's Julie here. When you talk about the need to get the vaccine out into minority communities, part of that piece as well, you talked about education, which is obviously very important. Part of that piece sure. as well is who is administering the vaccine. And I don't just mean Walgreens, I mean the actual person who's giving the shot. What percentage of your pharmacists are people of color, are people who look like their constituents who they're reaching out to? Because that also can be a part of the puzzle. Well, I can tell you that we have a, ver a very diverse um, set of, of well, population in terms of our pharmacists and our pharmacy techs that have been trained to administer the vaccine. And we are very uh, you know, proud of the fact that our pharmacists represent the communities uh, of which they serve. Uh, to give you that exact number, I will probably have to get back to you with that exact number, but um, our population of diverse employees in our field operation is 49%. So we have 49% diversity. and to a large extent, our pharmacy population matches that, but I can get back to you with that exact number. But we, we, we make sure that we represent the community and that we you know, try to target those areas with people that can connect and that are um, you know, in those communities. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and Carlos, ahead. looking at the, 
<laughs> no worries. And, and looking at uh, the administration <laughs> itself, we know that these two vaccines that are right now have specific uh, cold temperature requirements. And looking forward with J&J, right. uh, likely to come online in the next month or so, what are your thoughts about how you're going to distribute them, especially to these hard to reach communities, um, depending on which vaccine specifically will be sent out? Well, we right now we're equipped for all of the different requirements that are required for each of the respective vaccines. We have the you know extreme cold temperature storages in our stores uh, for the regular temperatures for I think the Moderna vaccine. We have those capabilities, and as I stated in the past, you know we've been doing vaccines whether it's the flu vaccine, the pneumonia vaccine, um, uh, the shingles vaccine. We, we quickly can pivot to meet the accommodations that are necessary to store those and then to transport them out to the necessary locations where we're going to administer them. So we we feel pretty confident that we're able to meet all of the criteria that's been set forth. All right, Carlos Cubia is the uh, Global Chief Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer at Walgreens Boots Alliance. Carlos, really appreciate you taking some time to speak with us this morning, uh, and I know we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me.